Hi, family. I'm back online once again. It's a pleasure. And you are watching One on One. Now, this is a podcast where, thankfully, I've been given the opportunity to have really interesting conversations. And one of those conversations that's been going on around the world is the issue of climate change and climate security. In essence, climate security holistically avoids every aspect of safety, vulnerability in all actions of man that may create a long-term pattern of adverse weather conditions within a given location or in any part of the global space on this planet. So what is the current state, current climate situation in Nigeria? Are we asking this question enough? Are we talking about this issue enough? How can Nigeria target green actions that will help maintain and sustain stability? Once again, this is One on One. My name is Titelaya Oyiso, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about climate security in Nigeria, looking at the necessary targets through green actions with Dr. Sunny Chuba Umwachuku. Now, he is a loyal Sigmite, PhD. He's a businessman. He's an industrialist. He's uh, also an MBA in management and fellow of the Institute of Chartered Chemists of Nigeria, a fellow of Chemical Society of Nigeria, and a member of the Chartered Institute of Strategic Management Nigeria. And uh, it's actually a, a pleasure and honor to have him on the show with us today. A very good evening to you, Dr. Sunny. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us today. Uh, from you. what I said, can you maybe can you maybe buttress on what I said initially? Right. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yeah, climate security basically targets green actions, like you said, and it's for stability as we are focusing on nigerian environment climate security is structured under two frameworks policy framework and legal framework with three critical dimensions on economics, on environmental and social issues that govern and control human actions and activities. Climate security engages multidimensional security activities like energy security, food security, state security, and all that. So in Nigeria, we have a lot of challenges that the economy is presently facing. And at a point, we're going to zero down to the economical dimensions. But looking at it holistically from uh, the global point of view and what is presently happening from the environmental aspect the the globe has faced a lot of environmental turmoil from the aspect of devastations and all the things that have happened because of the consumption of fossil fuel energy from uh, sourced from coal, from crude oil, and all that. And over the decades, all of these actions resulted to the global warming, you know, that is causing all the challenges all over the globe. We talk about the, the heat waves, the the floodings and the rest of it drought and rising sea levels and the rest of it but by the united nations intervention to mitigate and control and adapt to all of these global challenges a lot of measures have been put in place through which 
carbon emissions that is the greenhouse ga gases uh, to be controlled and be reduced to a bare to the barest minimum so now with with all of these challenges in nigeria as an, as one of the nigeria happens to be the sixth oil producing nation globally and um with the activities going on uh, through uh, uh, extractive operations of the of our uh, hydrocarbon operations that is the, the the crude extraction and the rest of it part of what also contributes to the uh, carbon emissions is the from that very oil sector is the uh, the, the gas flaring so all of these put together are what contributes to the the I have to come in. Carbon have, emissions. Doctor, yeah. Doctor, Dr. Sonny, I have to come in here because, you know, there are definitely some specific examples of climate related security risks, you know, that yeah. Nigeria is currently experiencing. You've mentioned, uh, you know, briefly, you've, you've already touched on a few. Uh, but then can we touch on some sustainable practices uh, that could help mitigate uh, the climate security risks in Nigeria and, and how possible you think it is for us to achieve these global targets. Right. Yeah. Uh, talking about some of the practices that will help mitigate some of these uh, excesses we're having by the occurrence of uh, global warming, well, we need to uh at this point zero into the energy security that is one of the areas that nigeria needs to focus on seriously presently in the country we know what we are facing uh, in the oil sector with the removal of the uh, uh subsidy the, the 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 fuel subsidy and that is presently having very adverse economic impact on, on, uh, on the citizens. So looking at that angle as an energy, uh, energy factor that should be uh, tackled to get these uh, problems solved, Nigeria or the government needs to uh, consider the situation of the the poor masses what they are facing just uh, very recently not up to uh, 72 hours the the fuel price has risen from 520 naira per liter to almost 700 naira per liter in some parts of the nation but some of the solutions that will be used under what I may call the, the energy mix solutions is to look at the gas value chain in that subsector for an alternative energy that will be produced, you know, uh, to cushion the effect of uh, the the rising price of uh, petrol or refined products. So with that, with the gas value chain, there are products that if they are locally or domest domestically produced, like the compressed natural gas or even the cooking gas, that is the, uh, the liquefied petroleum gas, it will help a lot to reduce the, co the, the high cost of living in the country because it is so unsustainable for people to be buying fuel per liter at almost 700 Naira. We have um, commercial drivers and then the, the, the civil servants and students alike 
that all of these are, have contributed uh, to uh, very high inflation and it has touched so many other aspects you know food prices and all that have increased so if the nation with the nigerian already we have our nigeria uh, uh, gas plan you know if that area should be looked into by the federal government and then develop production of uh, the cng and lpg that, that that also though they are all fossil they are sourced from fossil fuel but they are cleaner energy and they are wonderful alternatives to things like the uh, ago the mm. the pms and the the carol i wanted to so from that angle yeah. things could start go ahead sir. go ahead so from that dimension economically uh the 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 high the rising cost of commodities in the country or the hyperinflation being faced by virtually every person could start being mitigated that is just the point and there is another okay you, at this point i think you okay. can come in let i me, i wanted to let me, let i wanted to sort of digress into some of the initiatives or policies uh, that already exists in Nigeria that are likely aimed at addressing this issue of climate security. Um, what are they? How effective have they been? And uh, what would you th you say are the further actions that are needed? Yeah, if you talk about the initiatives and policies that we contribute to towards mitigating some of these things, the present uh, uh, economic hardship the country is facing. We'll be talking about uh, getting these products to be readily available. That is its affordability, the cost in the market. Once these items like the CNG gas that are wonderful alternative energies that will power the economy, and also drive uh, economic and commercial activities. Things will start getting uh, better because when you look at the the income of uh, the, the the masses, nothing is it's it, it's even getting weaker. But by this action from that is through the policy of the federal government to initiate do, and domesticate massive production of cng it could be used it's already in use even in nigeria uh, to power uh, internal combustion engines you know use it for commercial vehicles use it for uh, to operate uh, generating sets and all that we also know that electricity as one of the sources of energy is not getting friendlier to people. The tariff is getting higher and higher. So the government needs to come in at that point, create an enabling environment and encourage um, encourage private, the, the private sector investors to move in and get these products at their respective value chains uh, made available so that uh, the, the people can have some air of relief from you know, the, the present uh, economic hardship that mm -hmm. everyone is presently facing in the country. You know, and then... It does feel like um, there's so much going on that it's hard to say how one can also also contribute uh, in a positive way. How can individuals or even communities or, or businesses in Nigeria, how can they contribute to this issue of climate security? Um, especially since the pinch, it's it's everyone that's feeling the pinch now, no matter what your social right. status is or right. your economic right. status is. 
you still feel the pinch uh, no matter what. But could it still be said that as individuals or communities, we can we can contribute to climate security? And how? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Individuals and investors could come in to support and uh, improve on the present actions. Because uh, like we all know, the disposable incomes of civil servants and even those in business in informal sector is not getting better. So at that point, uh, investors should move into the that subsector, that uh, gas value chain subsector in the economy and make sure that at every stage or at any point uh, they are rendering services that things will start flowing seamlessly. For instance, uh, the, the transportation that is for commuters, the cost of transportation is terribly high. Just my personal experience, I went out to, uh, you know, to a vulcanizer to uh, uh, inflate my tires. The thing doubled more than 200%. And it is no, you don't have to blame any person because of the cost of uh, petrol that they use to uh, power uh, their equipment. So, but now, uh, for instance, uh, on the aspect of vehicles, the federal government could uh, come in with an initiative or the palliative that presently is being talked about of. Uh, 500 billion naira to be shared in six months to 12 million Nigerians at 8,000 naira per month. I think that one is still uh, under consumption, but an initiative whereby productivity could be uh, looked at and such uh, money, you know, being spent under uh, capital investment, you know, there is a, a short time capital investment by maybe the federal government uh, reaching out to even local vehicle manufacturers. For instance, Innocent, I know recently in, in the country is already producing uh, CNG powered mass transit buses. Federal government could as well, you know, invest such money by purchasing quite some number of buses uh, from uh, within, from such, uh, you know, a vehicle manufacturer, and then distribute it to the 36 states and Abuja, and from there to transcend to local government. We have such vehicles will be used uh, to commute civil servants to their workstations and uh, uh, students as well. It's a wonderful palliative because it is productive. It is not on the consumption aspect. Like if you collect 8,000 Naira, you, 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 you spend it. That 8,000 Naira cannot uh, you know, uh, be retrieved or show any impact. And then the aspect of uh, accountability on spending that 500 billion naira in six months, who will, you know, the in terms of transparency, it is, you know, it it's like uh, something happening, uh, you know, with uh, in murky waters. But like I've uh, had an instance of putting it channel, it, channeling it in a way that it could be uh, very productive and spread out to almost every Nigerian that needs it. It is productive. And even at that, those civil servants that go to work may even be paying a token. If you call it 100 Naira, uh, if they enter the bus to a location where it's supposed to cost like 400 Naira or 500 Naira, it's a it's it's palliative, productive palliative, and something will be uh, pouring back to the government to keep 
rolling over, you know, the the cost of uh, refueling the CNG for those buses to be running. So this, uh, this is just uh, a, a, an example of, you know, um, what could be done under the federal government's initiative as a palliative or subsidy to, to, to cushion the effect of the hardship presently being uh, experienced all over the country. I wanted to touch on, um, in, in your opinion, what steps you think Nigeria should take from here. The situation in the country is obvious. The, the roads are almost clear of traffic because of the fact that even vehicles are not that many on the road anymore. Um, many see Nigeria as a model for green action. Uh, but on the global stage, what do you think uh, Nigeria should be doing now to enhance its climate security? Right. Thank you for your question. This brings us uh, the, 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 the present uh, scheme of things, the, the United Nations and all the countries that are concerned are doing already uh, through all of the annual conventions that have been attended. Uh, you know, the upcoming one, the next one will now be at United Arab Emirates, that is the COP28. So what Nigeria should be doing as an oil producing nation is to focus seriously on investing and developing the, uh, the, the gas value chain infrastructure to enable investors to massively come in and run their business of uh, uh, within the gas infrastructure, you know, because um, there are it the, the, the value chain has a lot of stages that uh, you know uh, stakeholders could fix themselves in and run their business. And by this, we are contributing to the uh, to the global uh, carbon reduction. Uh, mitigation measures and it it will be very impactful and through the gas value chain again uh, the extractive operations that uh, cause that result to this gas flaring will be reduced and again you know technically the the cng gas basically is produced from methane that is just a lone carbon uh arcane all of these things put together uh would be contribution from the government uh, you know towards uh the the uh, uh, green action of uh, mitigating and adapting to uh you know uh, you know the global warming measures that are being taken and then again in the country in nigeria uh, we still have that window to exploit and uh, optimize what we are naturally endowed with. That is that that crude, that uh, natural resources, the hydrocarbon that we have in abundance. You know, uh, presently uh, talks like uh, uh, you know the technology of applying. Uh, an initiative of maximum energy and minimum emissions strategy. We favor Nigeria. It will favor the entire African nations because uh, majorly as poorer nations of the world and with the, you know, the uh, availability of these natural resources, we will still have like another 30 to 50 years to exploit and utilize our capital stock that is these items and then convert it to cash we will be growing economically in terms of finance and then also contributing on the environmental aspect uh, to uh, control the escalation of uh, global warming you know because 
if the earth is affected, everything will, will be gone. You know, but we are talking about making the planet Earth to be sustainable for future, for future uh, existence of man on Earth. Dr. Sonny Chuba Wachuku here. I have to say a big thank you to you for joining us. And over the past uh, 20 plus odd minutes, we've been talking climate security. Uh, in essence, as it holistically avoids every aspect of safety vulnerability in all actions of man. Uh, Dr. Ch Dr. Sonny has also gone into uh, this issue of um, this pattern of adverse weather conditions and, uh, of course, the current situation of Nigeria. And I have to say once again, thank you so much for joining us on One on One today. Please join us again whenever you have a, an extra minute to go deeper into what the situation is as at that time. Hopefully, uh, we would have achieved some of these green actions in the template that we see uh, being put out there by uh, the government today. Thank you so much. I'll be glad to join some other time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you so much. I said I would be glad to, to join in this discussion some other time if I'm <laughs> invited. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Sunny. You're welcome. Thank you so much. So when it comes to climate security in Nigeria, have we actually contributed and done our bit? That's the question that still keeps coming to mind as business owners, as, um, as individuals. What can we do to help contribute to uh, climate security? What green actions and sustainable practices can we put in place? There are a lot of... Uh, business owners, industrialists who are taking measures and making little changes here and there. And all I can do now is ask you, what are you doing in your little space to try and see if we can create a more sustainable climate for our children, for the generation that's coming after us? All right, then now one-on-one -on -one is all about those conversations that are really interesting and thought provoking. And if you think there's a conversation we should have with someone, you know, or even yourself, you can always just send us an email. That's dynamite podcast network at gmail.com dynamite podcast network at gmail.com. Once you reach out to us via email, we will get back to you and lock in a time for us to have a conversation online. All right, then make sure you uh, click the bell for notifications so you are aware of when the next uh, post will be made. Of course, you can always put in your questions, comments, and contributions in the chat box or comment section, depending on where you are listening or viewing us from. My name, once again, is Titelaya Oyison. And until next time, thanks for joining us. <laughs>